Hello YouTube viewers and Transformers fans of all ages, this is the TFN Geek coming to you with my second Transformers Generation slash Classics or Chug Transformers Collection video. My first one I did way back in April and I know more collection videos, they're long overdue and hopefully within the next few days I can upload as many as I've planned on, which is at least three and counting. So here is my second Generations Classics review. Today we are going to be taking a look at the extended Gen Transformers Generation 1 Season 1 1984 Extended Autobot cast. So after Optimus Prime and the original 18 Autobots were introduced during the pilot episode of Season 1 of the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon, an additional 13 episodes were added, totaling 16 in all, and um, throughout the process of the storyline told by the first 16 episodes of the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon, the original cast of 18 Autobots who flew on board the Ark Starship with Optimus Prime, they were joined by six more Autobot characters in the cartoon. So the first one to join was Jetfire, who is credited as being the first Autobot to have a jet for a vehicle mode. Oh, and out of the two classic style toys that Jetfire has been given, the Generations Leader 1, which is the only one I own, I believe it has a more intricate transformation, even though the original Transformers Classics Voyager class toy that was released back in late 2006 had a more G1 accurate transformation. As far as size accuracy, the Generations Leader class version of Jetfire is the more accurate one. And I can't, don't know for absolute certainty if the original Classics Jetfire toy had an opening cockpit, but the Generations version does, so that's a cool feature. And yes, there's just a quick look at Jetfire in his alternate mode of a. It's supposed to be a science fictional jet, but if you remove Jetfire's a. Uh, rocket booster. He actually looks a lot like an F-15 Eagle, which is probably the reason why he was repainted and retooled into the three uh, Generations Combiner Wars Leader Class Seekers of Thundercracker, Starscream, and Skywarp, but that's starting to get off topic. This focus is about the extended Season 1 Autobot characters now. I can't remember off the bat which episode Jetfire was introduced in, but Jetfire is infamous for having his name changed in the cartoon from Jetfire to Skyfire because of copyright reasons. His toy was made by Bandai, and Jetfire was the first Autobot Transformers character whose toy was made by a third-party company that was not affiliated directly with either Hasbro or Takar Tomy. So yes, Jetfire was uh, had a rocky start, especially when it came to his name, but... He's now a pretty well-recognized Transformers character, and unfortunately because of the copywriting between Bandai owning the toy that be was used to create Jetfire and Takara Tomy having the rights to the Transformers franchise in Japan, unfortunately, Jetfire, I believe I read on Wikipedia, he only got major screen time in, I believe, six episodes of the Transformers Generation 1 cartoon between both seasons 1 and 2, and... Most of the time that Jetfire got, he uh, acted as a troop carrier area that transported the Autobots to and from the battlefield, and then he disappeared without anyone finding out whatever happened to him. So I've always liked to think that Jetfire was assigned to do a deep space mission by Optimus Prime, and Jetfire never managed to return to Cybertron in time for his mission to be completed. But yes, there's always that possibility that Jetfire never died because they never actually showed it so setting Jetfire off to the side right. the main bulk of Autobot Transformers characters introduced throughout season 1 after the original 18 and also Jetfire was the first subgroup of Transformers characters to be introduced the Dinobots so going right to left we have Grimlock Slag, yes, I said his G1 name, Slag. And I know the term that it's used for in Europe, and that's not what he's named after. And then Swoop, even though he's named Strafe, Hasbro still has the rights to Swoop. And then we have Snarl, and finally Sludge. Yes, I call all five of the Dinobots by their G1 names. Now, unfortunately, the only toys of Snarl and Sludge that I own are 
the wor versions that are included with this set right here. This is the San Diego Comic Con slash Amazon 2014 exclusive set of Dinobots and at the time that I'm making this video, which is November 2017, the Transformers Power of the Primes Dinobots have just barely started to get released and unfortunately until they are released, this is the only set of G1 Dinobots that I have in my Transformers collection now. I was actually going to originally get the Transformers Platinum Edition Dinobots that came with the G1 head sculpts, but at the time when I decided to buy the Dinobots, which was back in June of this year, here, the San Diego Comic Con slash Amazon exclusive Dinobots were surprisingly cheaper than the Platinum Edition Dinobots were going for. And since the only difference between the Platinum Edition Dinobots and the San Diego Comic Con versions was different sculpted robot mode heads. I realized that the dino modes were almost virtually identical and the price tag was enough to convince me that the San Diego Comic Con Dinobots were worth the price tag and that included Sla Udge. At the time when I bought the Dinobots, the Platinum Edition set which had the G1 head sculpts was going for $150 at Amazon and between the San Diego Comic Con Dinobots and also Sludge, who was sold separately at Amazon.com, I only had to pay $100 for these guys. I managed to get the San Diego Comic Con Dinobots for just $75, and I only had to pay $25 for Sludge. So yes, that was a great price to make for these guys. So bringing Jetfire back in, standing him up. And so, here's one last look at these guys in there vehicle mode slash alt modes and I will transform them off camera and show them off into robot mode. Sorry for that brief pause in the video but here they are in robot mode and it was a lot of difficulty to transform these guys out of their alt modes into their robot modes. Oh wait what's that you say? Oh I'm sorry. I've had one complaint from Grimlock that he deserves to be in the center since he is the king of the Dinobots, even though the other Dinobots might not see him as a king. But yes, right now, as of this release of November of 2017, when I'm making this video, these are the best versions of the extended Season 1 Autobot cast from the original Transformers franchise that have been given updated toys by Hasbro in the Generation slash Classics toy lines. And for what they are, I think they're unique in their own right. They are expensive, the San Diego Comic Con versions of the Dinobots, and it was probably a waste of me not waiting for the announcement of the Power of the Primes versions of the Dinobots, but I don't know. I have no regrets purchasing these toy toys. And one cool thing about Jetfire is that if you look right here, he has a... I just fired his missile. Get back in there. Uh, his, no, that was not his firing missile is what I was going to say, but Jetfire has a removable mask, so you can make him Jetfire or Skyfire if you so desire to follow his animation model or the toy model. Of him. So yes, this has been a updated video. Sorry, a my tongue's failing me again. A collection video about the extended season one Transformers Generation One Classics as Generations Autobot characters, and hopefully I can do a my next collection video soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This has been the TF Fan Geek. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.